I appreciate you joining us for this time of Bible study, and I'm praying that our time together in God's Word will be helpful to you in your spiritual growth. As always, I want to encourage you uh, to contact me if you ever have any questions or comments about our study time together. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can send me an email. That's what most people choose to do. Or uh, you can try to reach me here at the church office. The uh, information's on our website, hopebiblechurchga.com. I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you live in this area of Locust Grove, Georgia, we'd love for you to come by and visit us at Hope Bible Church. We're a friendly church. We'd love to see you, to meet you in person if you watch us. Um, it'd be great to, to, to meet you in person and know that you're watching us on Bible study time. And, of course, if you're looking for a church home, uh, like I said, we're a friendly church that's always welcoming to visitors. Uh, we're not an us for and no more type of an assembly. We're always excited to see new faces in the meetings. Uh, we're located in Locust Grove on Tanger Boulevard. We're easy to find and the directions are on uh, the website. A lot of stuff on our church website. I always like to start out our study time by directing people uh, to that because I realize there are people tuning in maybe for the first time. So I, some of you who maybe have been listening to a number of these lessons might find the first part of it kind of repetitive, but there's a reason for that. You got new people tuning in and you never know who's listening or watching. And so uh, we have study material on the website. You can download some written studies, listen to audio studies verse by verse through books of the Bible, video messages. All of these uh, lessons on Bible study time are being archived on our YouTube channel. All you got to do is click on video under resources, and it'll take you right to it. And uh, so let me encourage you about all of that. Now, we are uh, talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. We have talked about what that means basically and we have started very general laying the foundation and we've gotten more and more detailed and specific as we've gone along and this is our 40th lesson and I'm not quite sure yet how many we're going to do we're going to eventually uh, put an end to this series and uh, kind of close it I mean we could go on and on and on but we're trying to basically systematically go through the scripture showing people how to study the Bible for themselves and learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. That's what this series of studies is all about. And right now we're just kind of going through some specific differences by comparing scripture with scripture. Uh, you can see that it's not possible for us to follow everything the Bible says. Uh, there, God says different things to different people living under different dispensations, and we're going to have to rightly divide the word of truth if we're going to know what God wants us to do in this present age. All the Bible is for us. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, that's one of the misconceptions people have about right division. They say, well, you're trying to chop up the Bible and get rid of some of the Bible. We're, we're doing nothing of the sort. Uh, all the Bible's for our learning. We need it all. We need to read it and study it. It's just not all written directly to us. And everybody, they, they know that to some extent, whether they want to admit it or not. I mean, nobody today is building an ark. I mean, it's raining outside while I'm recording this lesson, and I don't see anybody out there in the parking lot trying to build an ark because they think the flood's coming. That's something God told Noah to do. That's not something we're to do today. Okay, so uh, you can't follow everything. Now, you need to believe it all. You need to study it all and understand. Make the applications where you can because there are things that never change, but there are things that do change. Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All the Bible is the word of truth, but there are some divisions in there that God put. And right division is not ignoring those divisions. It's not making up your own. It's simply acknowledging the divisions God clearly put in his word. It's possible to wrongly divide. I mean, if you don't divide at all or you make up divisions that aren't there, you're wrongly dividing. But rightly dividing is comparing scripture with scripture, and when things are different, you leave them different. You quit trying to pretend it's all the same. It's just going to lead you to confusion, and you can't possibly know how to serve the Lord uh, in this present age of grace, if you just take all the Bible and think it's all written directly to you because there are things that are different. And so we've been going through some of these things. We've talked about the law. We've talked about the law in general. Then we talked about diet. We've talked about circumcision, holy days, water baptism, salvation, justification, forgiveness, 
we covered all of that in our last study. I want to pick it up in this study, uh, talking about righteousness. Look in Deuteronomy 6 and Philippians 3. And we're just going to take these passages and compare them. If you have your Bible available, let me encourage you to get it out and look at it and check it. If you don't have a Bible around, you can just, if, maybe if you have something to write with, write down these references, and when you get a chance, look at it for yourself with your own eyes and see the differences here that we're pointing out in the Word of God. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 24, uh, the Word of God says this, Moses speaking, And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that He might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He hath commanded us. Very clear. Our righteousness, if we keep these commandments, there was a righteousness of the law. All right, Philippians 3. In Philippians 3, and notice in verse 4, Paul said, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man, uh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Look at his pedigree. He said, Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew the Hebrews. As touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. See, there was a righteousness uh, that came by keeping the law. But notice what he said. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in Him. He said, all that righteousness I had before, he said, that's dung compared to Christ and His righteousness. He said, be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So it's the faith of Christ we're justified by His faith, His righteousness. And so you see the difference there about being made righteous. And um, look, look at another passage, Revelation 19. Here's a difference. Revelation 19 has got to do with the second coming of Christ. And there's going to be a marriage supper and that's got to do with God's dealings with Israel. The marriage supper will take place in the earth Israel will be married back to her land. It'll be called Beulah. That means married. That's in prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Beulah land's got to do with Israel being back in their land. And they were God's wife put away for her idolatry. Uh, but God's going to take her back as a virgin bride under a new covenant. And uh, there's going to be a bride of the Lamb of the nation Israel. He said in Revelation 19... Verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. Now notice he said the marriage, of the, land, the marriage of the Lamb has come. When does it come? At the second coming of Christ. It's not about us. It's not about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is raptured out before the tribulation. This is the second coming. Israel will have this marriage. I personally believe the whole millennial reign is the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it said, His wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. See, the righteousness of saints. Paul said, not my own righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. Those who get the white robes in the tribulation are those that reject the beast and endure to the end. And they get that white robe by overcoming and having their own righteousness by a faith that endures to the end. So you see these distinctions. What about the love of God? Now, that's an attribute of God, and, that, and that's an unchanging thing. God is love in every age, but there's some distinctions you need to look at. Look in Jude, the book of Jude, and Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, and the little epistle of Jude, just one chapter, right before Revelation. You see in, in Jude, verse 21, we're just going to believe what it says. 
Verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. These are people that are looking for the mercy. They're looking for the eternal life. It's going to come at the second coming of Christ for the nation of Israel. In the meantime, as they're in that tribulation, they're going to have to keep themselves in the love of God. If they take the mark of the beast, they'll be damned. They keep themselves in the love of God by keeping his commandments. I base that on John 15. Jesus Christ very clearly taught uh, the disciples about how they need to keep the commandments to continue uh, in God's love. It's in John 15. Let me read it real quick, and then we're going to Romans 8. Uh, in John 15, verse 9, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Keep yourself in the love of God. Uh, a man in the tribulation that ends up taking the mark of the beast, he's damned. That's just the way it is. That's a different time. That's not where we're living. Look in Romans 8, Romans 8, verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. And he listed all these things. He said, nothing. We're in the body of Christ. We're sealed as members of his body. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. What about acceptance with God? Look, please, in Acts 10. Acts chapter number 10, and then Titus chapter 3. Acts 10 and Titus 3. You talk about some differences here. Peter, preaching to the household of Cornelius, and Cornelius was a God-fearing Gentile that blessed the seed of Abraham, and uh, Peter didn't understand why God sent him to Cornelius. God had to give him a special vision. Peter didn't understand the body of Christ. That doctrine wasn't revealed to him in the early chapters of Acts. And he, look at what he says to, to Cornelius' household in Acts 10.35. Well, look at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. God said, well, if you fear God, Peter said, if you fear God and work righteousness, you'll be accepted with him. But Titus 3, verse 5, Paul said, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's very different. Acts 10, 35, Titus 3, 5. Look at that difference. Peter said, if you work righteousness, you're accepted with him. Paul said, not by works of righteousness. And Paul said in Ephesians 1, verse 6, that we are accepted in the Beloved. And the Beloved is Jesus Christ. We're accepted in him. What about Blessings. Look in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter number 28 and Ephesians chapter 1. In Deuteronomy 28, concerning God's covenant with his earthly people, Israel, he had this to say, and that's a long chapter, and obviously we're not going to read down through it, but let's read the first part of it. It should come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Notice that. You've got to do the commandments and all of them. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed, and on it goes. They are blessed on earth with physical material blessings on the basis of their performance. Now, you'll often hear uh, TV preachers use this wrongly and act like it's for us today when it's not. But the, they, you never hear him read the end of the chapter where he says, and by the way, the far majority of this chapter, he says, if you don't do these commandments, you'll be cursed in all these things. Blessed if you obey, cursed if you disobey. That's God's covenant of law. 
But Ephesians 1, 3, Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ. Israel will be blessed on earth with material blessings based on their performance. But under grace, we are blessed in heavenly places with spiritual blessings based on our position in Christ, not our performance at all. You see, there's a difference there. And then you go to Revelation 2 and 3, and there's seven letters to seven churches, and I'm not going to read through there because for sake of time, but you mark it, there are blessings promised if you overcome. Paul said we're already blessed with all spiritual blessings, but in Revelation 2 and 3, those people have to overcome to get the blessings and it's an amazing thing. You look at the blessings he mentions in Revelation 2 and 3 for an example. He said, if you overcome, you'll get the, the tree of life. Well, that's not even a promise I need as a member of the body of Christ. I'm going to get a glorified body. I don't need the tree of life to have physical life. He said, if you overcome, you won't be heard of the second death. I don't need that promise because I can't be heard of the second death as a member of the body of Christ. And on and on it goes. Look, those seven churches are representative churches. The whole book of Revelation was sent to those churches for them to uh, uh, keep the instruction of the whole book, not just the seven letters. The whole book's got to do with the day of the Lord. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day in Revelation 1.10. He was transported to the future day of the Lord to write concerning those things, and he's writing to churches in the future who will be in those days. They're tribulation saints. Church is just a called out assembly. There's more than one kind of church in the Bible. There's the church, the body of Christ in this age of grace, but there'll be churches after we're raptured out. There'll be assemblies in the tribulation period. There's no doubt about it. And so you see the blessings are conditioned on them overcoming, but our blessings in the body of Christ are simply based on who we are as members of the body of Christ. What about, what about Psalm 51 and Ephesians 4? What about the Holy Spirit. The minist There's one Holy Spirit, but his ministry, there are some distinctions in the different ages. There's, uh, there's some things that are different about the Holy Spirit. Uh, and David, under the law, is praying in Psalm 51, and he says in verse 11, uh, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You know, uh, it says in 1 Samuel 16, uh, verse 14, that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. David knew about that. And David was confessing his sin, saying, Oh, don't do to me what you did to King Saul. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Well, we don't have to pray that way today because it says in Ephesians 4.30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. That's when the rapture takes place and our bodies redeemed. We get a new glorified body. We're sealed. We're secure. The Holy Spirit will never depart from us. What about this issue of security? Look in Matthew 24 and 1 Corinthians 1. Matthew 24 and 1 Corinthians 1. The body of Christ, and we did a whole lesson on this, but the body of Christ has eternal security as members of the body of Christ. But in the tribulation, it's possible for a person to make a profession, say they believe Jesus is the Christ, and then end up taking the mark of the beast, and they'll be damned. In first, or Matthew 24, verse 13. Matthew 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Look in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? God is faithful by whom you are called. You see, they must endure to the end, and they'll be saved. Somebody said, well, that just means they'll be saved physically. Well, obviously, if they physically endure the tribulation, they have, they've made it physically through. That would be rather redundant to say, if you endure physically, you'll be saved physically. No, they'll be saved as in Romans 11, all Israel shall be saved at the second coming of Christ. They have to endure. But Paul said the body of Christ, that, we, that God's confirmed us to the end. Uh, we're not going through any of the tribulation. The end here is talking about the end as in. There's nothing we can do in this life. Uh, there's nothing we can do to change our standing in Christ, and we are sealed until we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. 
And, uh, and so there's a, there's a, there's a, a vast difference there. Uh, we don't have to endure anything to be saved. Uh, we're saved uh, instantly and permanently by the grace of God, and we have eternal security. Uh, we did a whole lesson on prayer, um, Matthew 21, 22. Let's look at Matthew 20. I'm just going to give you one example. Uh, there's some differences concerning prayer as we rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, Matthew 21, and compare that with 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Jesus said in Matthew 21, verse 22, In all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. That's what he said to the 12 apostles who were going to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. But Paul, our apostle, our example in this age of grace, said in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, verse number 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He the thorn in his flesh. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, the Lord did not give him what he asked for, okay? And we're, we're given no promise that we'll get whatsoever we ask. We just need to trust the Lord with all our needs and pray about it, but just trust him with it. There's no guarantee we'll get what we ask, but he'll give us his peace and his grace, and that's what's most important. What about provision? Look in Acts 4, Acts chapter 4, and compare that with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Acts 4, 1 Thessalonians 4. In the early chapters of Acts, they're living in a foretaste of the kingdom. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. The kingdom's being preached. And it says in Acts 4, verse 34, Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold, laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made in every man according as he had need. They didn't lack because they sold all things, had all things common, and that worked for them because they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. 1 Thessalonians 4, something very different. Verse 11 and 12, Paul said that you study to be quiet, to do your own business, work with your own hands. That was, we commanded you that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. Paul said, do your own work with your own hands, and you'll have lack of nothing. In Acts 4, it said they sold all things, had all things common, they lacked nothing. But see, there's a difference there, obviously. Now, we ought to give to others as the Lord leads and be gracious in our giving, but we're to supply for our own. Paul said if a man won't provide for his own house, he's worse than an infidel. And that, what about giving? Look in um, Malachi 3 and 2 Corinthians 9. We're just going through these verses and showing you the differences. They're very different, and we're rightly dividing. We're not pretending all this is the same when it's not. Malachi 3 and 2 Corinthians 9. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. You have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, so I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And so on. Now this is written to Israel because in chapter 1 he said, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel. And Israel was given commandments concerning tithing. And it had to do with uh, crops and stuff as far as providing for the, the, the temple and the priest. And uh, we're not under that commandment today concerning tithes. God said under the law, if you don't tithe, you're cursed. Well, see, had, under the law covenant, if you obeyed, you were blessed. If you disobeyed, you were cursed. And, there, and tithing was very complex. There was a number of tithes they had to go about uh, doing under the law. And, but look in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. He said, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. He said, Give as you purpose in your heart. Be gracious in your giving. Grace, giving is a grace, and, and uh, we, we don't do it of necessity. Tithing was a necessity. Now, people ought to, under grace, I mean, God is the greatest giver, and if, and if we have his, if we are walking in his spirit, we'll be a giving person, and certainly uh, we ought to give more under grace. I'm, I'm not saying we don't tithe to try to get out of giving. We give. But there's a difference between the commandment of tithing as a necessity versus grace giving. Besides, I can't be cursed by the law. Paul said in Galatians 3 
uh, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse from a, uh, being made a curse for us. I can't be cursed for not tithing anyway. I'm not under the law, but I'm a grace giver. And on it goes. What about witnessing? In Matthew 10, who are we to witness to? How are we going to go about the work of evangelism? Get Matthew 10 and 1 Timothy 2. Matthew 10 and 1 Timothy 2. In Matthew 10, it says in verse number 5, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and in any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the kingdom of heaven, see, it begins with Israel being blessed, and then they are a kingdom of priests to the nations. That's why there was an order there to that. They had to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel first. He said, Go not in the way of the Gentiles. But 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, God, uh, Paul said, Who God will have all men to be saved and come in knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. It's to all men alike now. Somebody said, well, Matthew 28, he said to go to all nations. Yeah, but still, if you look at the kingdom commission, he said, begin in Jerusalem. Begin in Jerusalem. All right, but now it's to all men alike. We witness to all. There's no difference between Jew or Gentile. And all who believe the gospel are baptized by one spirit and one body. I'll give you one more. 1 John 2 with Ephesians 4. What about the need for teachers today? In 1 John 2, John writing to the circumcision, 1 John 2, verse number uh, 27 said, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and it is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught him, you shall abide in him. But look in Ephesians 4, verse 11. It says, And he gave, talking about Christ, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Paul said, Christ from heaven uh, gave the body of Christ some teachers. John said, you don't need anybody to teach you. You have this anointing. There's a difference there. There's a difference. And on it goes. I've given you 20 clear differences on, on, on issues, uh, comparing Scripture with Scripture. Between last lesson and this lesson, we looked at 20 different things. And my friend, that's not all there is. And so you, you better study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I appreciate you joining us today, and I hope you'll join us again next time.